Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Carolina Quesada with the Nonprofit Partnership, welcoming you to this segment of Our Stories, Our Time. In this series, we interview nonprofit leaders to understand how organizations are navigating through the challenges of these current times. And today we continue with our summer series where we interview organizations with a particular focus on recreational, outdoor, and or youth activities and programs. Uh, and before I introduce our special guests today, uh, the Nonprofit Partnership wishes to thank the Port of Long Beach for their generous support of this series. Now, again, you know, if you're watching us live on Facebook, please feel free to engage and interact with us um, by leaving a question for our guests or, or comments in the comment boxes as well. And with that, I will introduce Michelle Wells, who is president and co-founder of Shared Science, and Laura Thor, Manager of Programs and Processes. Welcome, Laura and Michelle. And thanks, Carolina. It's really great to be with you here this afternoon. Thank Hello, you, everyone. thank you. So, um, you know, I just have to warn everybody watching here today that I'm gonna be using a lot the word cool and awesome because honestly, when you get to know more about who Shared Science is, what they do, how they got started, you will be using the same adjectives. I promise you, I promise you. So with that, Michelle and Laura, Shared Science is really cool. <laughs> Tell us all about you. How did you get started? Shared Science really is cool. Uh, we started in 2009. Three moms got together. One happened to be an engineer, one happened to be a communications expert, and one was super great at accounting. And uh, we all had second graders, and we noticed that even though LBUSD has great teachers, great instructions, the science curriculum, the technology curriculum was a little sad. Uh, we were looking at Apple computers that were uh, 15 years old in the computer lab and uh, considering the skill sets that our students were going to need in the, you know, when they, by the time they graduated high school. So we looked around and we decided that there was a need for kids to engage with science, technology, engineering, math. And so we started with Lego ed kits of all things. We think Lego is the perfect toy, but it's also the perfect teaching tool. Um, so currently we focus on the greater Long Beach area, the 70,000 students that are here in Long Beach. Um, we have programs that start as early as K for kinder. Um, we're going to actually, I'm super excited about a collaboration we're uh, doing with Young Horizons to do some pre-K stuff for the very first time. And then we work all the way up to uh, high school level where we uh, match engineer mentors with high school students on the uh, robotics team that's hosted by Sato Academy. Wow, amazing. A lot of different moving pieces in all of this and, and just your foundation. And again, um, mom's concerned about, again, I get suppose the, the quality of education, right? And and the interaction and, and other avenues to really promote creativity with, with kids. So, um, but you know, this is interesting. So why, why engineering particularly? Are kids really drawn to this? Well, I don't know if, I, I know that there are particular students who are drawn, but our intent is to attract all students to this, uh, uh, particular academic field. Um, we look at STEM as the language of innovation. So it's not just science on its own, technology or engineering or mathematics on its own. It's that smushed together, sort of like project-based learning, where you're taking multiple topics and putting them together to make sense of the world around you. And so a lot of what we do in terms of our daily lessons is around the engineering design process. How do you solve problems? First, define the problem, then identify what tools and materials do you have to solve that problem, and then build a prototype, and then test it, and then communicate your ideas. So this whole cyclical process teaches students how to identify problems, how to go about solving them on their own uh, by following methodologies that have been proven over time. 
And, you know, the language of technology, we're, no one can get a, away from that. The pandemic has certainly brought that first and forefront. All students, all families have to access information via the internet or digital means. And so having that connection and, and understanding how to use those tools to the best of your advantage will give you great career success and, you know, that pursuit of the American dream at some point. Absolutely. And and in all of that you talked about and described, you know, the, the critical thinking, um, the even like the, the process mapping that happens and, you know, uh, you may not realize that you're, you're learning how to do that, but, but the interaction, it sounds like, is, is pretty fun for them. It's engaging. They, they get to do things, right? Um, and they get to build things that probably go and move in ways that they didn't imagine. Yes, yeah, so they're exploring. They're not really so. This is our our insider trickiness is you know they're learning, but they're not really uh, going through that drudge of learning, right? It's all coming to them naturally. They have inquisitiveness. They can pursue different uh, methodologies to solve a problem. One of the things that we emphasize is failure it is really okay to fail at whatever task is at hand. Can you learn from it? Can you take that to another level? What can you adjust so that you have better success? Again, all part of that process of innovation. And we know that innovation, failures, um, create great products and fulfill great services and needs that the community has at large. Uh, you know, we are sending people up, crews up into space in private crafts, like with SpaceX, but a lot of the products and innovation and ingenuity that goes into sending people, you know, off planet mm -hmm. are uh, adapted and used to the benefit of the community at large. So, mm -hmm. um, those investments are essential to our progress and to our place in the future. Absolutely. And Laura, turning to how Shared Science is doing this, um, I hear that you work with a, quite a, a cohort or a cadre of, of volunteers and, and instructors. Help us understand a little bit more how the behind the scenes uh, is organized and, and all the things that have to happen to bring to fruition these kinds of programs and activities? So a lot of that, it goes back to how our staffing and our board, which we're really appreciative and how unique they are and what they can bring and offer to the table for shared science. We have instructors who are masters at curriculum and bring a wide range of unique activities that are getting kids into STEM and making them Again, like Michelle was saying, it's learning, but it's not learning because you're having fun at the same time and you're still able to engage with the kids. Um, all of our volunteers, like our board, come together to offer their specific skill sets um, and how we can benefit um, the Long Beach Unified School District, what we can learn from them, how we can offer our services. Uh, we're collaborating with a lot of other different groups like the Salvation Armies, Boys and Girls Club, um, over the summer, we worked with Ranchos Los Cerritos to do a monthly visit. So we're always open and available to work with others to make sure that our organizations are out there mm -hmm. and that we can um, offer our services to whoever needs them and where we're needed most. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it sounds like your board is also like they'll roll up their sleeves and and the board members are, are also in the classroom, right? Or yes. engaging with, with kids as well. Um, so how do you go about then, Laura, you know, recruiting for instructors or, or volunteers and, and are all instructors like doing this as a volunteer? Or tell us more about, you know, kind of the different groups of people you work with. So with our instructors, a lot of them are working towards their credentials or already have their credentials and a lot of our recruitment comes from referrals from our boards and our staff. Um, but we also open up internship opportunities from Long Beach City College and Cal State Long Beach so that we can get those future innovators and staff in here that can help propel shared science into a new learning environment. Well, that's great. So you have pipelines to actually engage up and coming young professionals as well. 
-hmm. right, um, in the field and and participate in your program, and maybe in the future in governance, <laughs> and maybe in the future, you know, continue to help contribute to the sustainability of such a cool organization. Use the word what three times now on the interview. <laughs> um, so looking at the summer, and of course, I'm also curious to ask you some questions around just experiencing um, the pandemic, but. But, you know, looking at the summer right now, tell us about what you're working on. Um, how is there still time for families to engage with you? Uh, tell us about what you've got going on right now. Our summer programs are a pretty heavy hit. We hit right after the day after school gets out, you know, where our programs start with summer camp weeks. So we've already been rolling for five weeks. Um, and so we're actually winding down camp experiences. Um, although this week we are over at Salvation Army delivering our fourth annual uh, Tech Girls Workshop. And um, we have a whole cadre of different instructors who are providing half hour lessons in various areas of uh, STEM related fields. Uh, in fact, today's a guest speaker was Rebecca Kama from the city of Long Beach, who is sharing about digital inclusion and her, her process for getting to the position that she is now. So what schooling she did and you know how much technology experience did she have to do uh, or have on hand to be able to perform her, uh, her job with the city. And the girls were truly engaged and um, fascinated by uh, the city stepping up and fulfilling this need of the community at large to make sure that there's digital equity and uh, inclusion among the numerous communities that Long Beach uh, uh, has. So, so Girls Tech work Workshop, that is just wrapping up this week. But I did want to share that we have um, our first Lego League Robotics team uh, starting to ramp up. We did a prep class a week or two ago, but now our spots are open for registration. Those spaces are limited because we maximize six to seven students per team. And we usually field about two teams each year. That's for grades four through eight. So any kids out there interested in robotics and um, wanting to play the annual game that's hosted by First Legal League, this is your opportunity to uh, learn more about coding and programming and again, problem solving because the field game is made up of Lego uh, apparatus that you have to navigate around or manipulate in some way to gain points and play the game. Okay, I even want to sign up for that. Right? right <laughs> it's super fun. Um, I have families contacting me. Oh, well, my child wants to be with so and so. Can you make sure they're on the same team? And we're like, and we say that robotics in our team programs are like sports. So the dedication that it requires is, you know, you're meeting a couple times a week for a few hours each time to practice and get ready. And the season runs uh, the end of August through mid-November, so right before Thanksgiving break, unless they go on to championships, in which case there's a, another tournament at the beginning of December. Really cool. Interesting. Um, so um, looking at then, you know, and, and kind of shifting a little bit, shifting gears to, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, you know, we're still being impacted by, by coronavirus, but give us a good sense of you know, how you have had to shift, um, what happened, what were some of the changes you, you instituted, um, whether in your programs or even in the way the organization is, you know, organized. Um, give us some more of an insider's view of what happened when the pandemic broke out. Mm -hmm. Laurie, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Um, so when the pandemic hit, we were still in our after school program session for the spring and it was a quick shift of gears to okay if we're we were still open we had to you know make sure we're sanitizing our equipment kids are washing their hands and taking all the precautions we could until we were unable to do so within the Long Beach School District so during that time we really had to learn to pivot from being an in-person hands-on education organizations to how can we shift to online and still reach those kids and make sure we're having an impact on their lives um, our first summer was kind of brutal during the pandemic, but we were really thankful that 
we were still able to host a couple day camps, um, kind of configure how we can still put our programs out there, but still being cautious of the situation going on at hand to this summer, all of our in-person classes are pretty full and we're really thankful that um, kids still wanna be a part of our programs. We have kids returning who came from school uh, or after school's program and returning. So seeing that impact and seeing the reaction on the kids' faces to be able to uh, do in-person learning again is really exciting and exhilarating. Um, but we've learned a lot throughout the, the year now and we can't see, wait to see what's more to come and how we can shift our learning to better suit the needs of our, um, our participants. Yeah, I would only add that uh, in-person learning has been our priority this whole time. Uh, the schools were really committed to getting education back online. And uh, so students were spending many, many hours on screens to get their daily education. So we were committed to trying to find opportunities and partner with other uh, entities like Salvation Army or the May Center or Rancho Los Cerritos to uh, provide in-person experiences that were safe and mindful of the CDC guidelines, but gave those uh, families a chance to reconnect with learning hands-on. Absolutely, and you know, um, you mentioning some of your partners right now also reminds me that ever since we started this interview too, you have been talking about partners throughout and, and collaboration. And, and we like to explore how the pandemic has perhaps impacted collaboration. So curious to know from you what the impact has been. But to start off with, you've always been a very collaborative organization to begin with. So tell us more about, about those collaborations and you know, has there been any change in the last year? Well, we like to think that we've been collaborative, sure, uh, but this past year has forced us to take it to a whole new level. So we already had relationships with Long Beach City College, for example, to host our annual Robotech Festival, which was free to the public and had attracted you know, several hundred family members to experience short STEM learning opportunities and uh, get a taste of what STEM learning was. And uh, with Long Beach Unified, we were there after school at numerous uh, elementary sites um, delivering once a week lessons for several week sessions. And that was all going super well. And we had even uh, dipped our toe into in during school hours lessons. So we were at Los Cerritos and I had just signed a contract with Cleveland Elementary before the, the sky fell upon us. And, uh, and being able to teach alternative fuel vehicle lessons for an entire student body was a huge learning curve, but um, super exciting experience for us to grow into. And so when the pandemic hit, we, started looking outward more. So finding places that could host us, because remember we are where students are. We don't have our own facility. We are on school sites. We go where kids are. So Rancho Los Cerritos was saying, well, we can do outdoor education. And so we partnered up with them thanks to a mutual connection through the Munzer Foundation. And then we reached out to the May Center and they had just uh, finished building their beautiful outdoor garden. And so we were able to offer learning experiences at, in the garden there and then collaborate with, um, what's the, the name of the gardening organization, Laura? Grant Education. Thank you. Grounds Education. They were super fabulous and came out during Robotech and taught in the May Center Garden, part of their curriculum, but it's all science related, right? So, and then we could bring the technology and engineering conversation to it and they could bring the, the natural environment and bio uh, sciences to it. Uh, so wherever we're going, that is what we're finding. And then with Salvation Army, like we have we're there uh, once a week, um, and then we're there all week this week with the, the tech girls. 
what a wonderful facility that they have with their new family center and the willingness to want to bring into their summer program um, our style of education so that it gives kids an opportunity to experience that that might not otherwise have access to that that subject, that type of education. And we're bringing all of the gear. So teaching science, technology, and engineering is not um, not for the faint of heart in terms of equipment and computers mm -hmm. that you need and mm -hmm. iPads and software and other tools. Robots are not uh, easily accessible if you're um, in an underserved area. So mm -hmm. those things we make sure we provide. We bring it all and has set up classroom where the kids are. That's great. And we can't forget the Legos, Michelle. Can't and we can't forget the Legos. Forget the Lego. <laughs> so Michelle and Laura, I mean, as, as, you, as you think back over you know, the last year and all the changes that you've had to make, the, the pivots, um, any, any lessons learned or anything you wanna share as far as you know, what, what collaboration has taught you or, or what you've learned as a result of being you know, part of the shared science family and what collaboration with others means to you. Laura, you want to start with thoughts or I can? Um, on a personal level, it taught me more to be a little bit more outgoing. I have a really shy nature. So <laughs> reaching out to those um, partners that like the Ranchos Los Cerritos and Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club, making those new connections really help uh, expand our reach um, to those that we're trying to impact. And we're really thankful. I'm thankful for being able to make those connections and talking to new people on a whole new level and learning new things. And I think as Share Science begins to grow and me with it, um, I wanna see us excel and see us continue to do what we do with the students in our area or and even more. Yeah, just to add on to what she's saying, you know, Shared Science isn't a large organization. We have 15 part-time staffers and um, no full-time staff. We don't, I mean, we have our own office, obviously, but we don't have a large space or facility. We've been small but mighty trying to do the most good with the smallest budget. And uh, these collaborative partnerships that we've developed have helped us expand our reach without a lot of economic commitment. And to make sure, like Laura was saying, that we are reaching more families and students um, with our programs. And we weren't able to do that uh, as successfully before uh, we started concentrating on it, right? The pandemic forced us to look at those. We were pretty self-sufficient before, and now we realize, wow, there's so much more power in having friends. Who yes. knew? <laughs> no, absolutely. And this is why we love exploring this with everyone, you know, we talk to in our stories, our time, because um, we're hearing, you know, just a lot of stories around how organizations are really valuing now even even more so not that it hasn't been valued before but but just this necessity i think really creates a whole different dynamic around you know let's really look at this differently let's kind of try and collaborate around some things and and maximize some some output or some outcomes here together um now i i would like to especially acknowledge the nonprofit partnership truly uh, the training that the nonprofit partnership provides has been um, truly instrumental in our success as a small organization, providing the tools and resources that we wouldn't have access to otherwise, and um, and making us mindful. So we are small but mighty, but we act at very professional, we are, and we have the corporate training and experience because of the level of professionalism that the nonprofit provides organizations like ours um, to make sure and ensure that we know what are the, the latest legal trends and what are the, and bringing about those networking uh, opportunities so that, um, like I had attended a marketing training as a refresher and had met with another marketing person from Young Horizons. And so we were able to make that connection naturally and uh, 
help both of our programs. So making those connections are, is something that we are super, super appreciative of the nonprofit partnership. And thank you, Port of Long Beach, for supporting us as well and the nonprofit partnership. Wow. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, and, you know, I, I think that as we look now to um, the future and, and what the future holds for shared science, tell us a little bit more about what's, what's on the horizon for you. For example, you know, Laura, is there a particular focus on, on recruitment, on maybe more collaboratives? Tell us more about what's, what's on the uh, short-term outlook for shared science. Well, as mentioned before, a lot of our uh, staff and instructors are working towards their credentials. So recruitment is key right now, especially during their fall. We hope that um, Long Beach Unified School District will open the doors to outside programs so that we're able to reach those students um, after school, before school. Uh, and then on a, on a larger note, looking to see where we can meet the students, where we'll be at and making future uh, connections with those with like-minded uh, missions. Yes, absolutely. All of those things. Uh, we are super hopeful that the school district is able and can accept programs from outside back onto campuses. That's a huge, huge step for us. Without that, we it will be the same year that we just had. So uh, hopefully that will happen. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we are looking for after school. We are looking to do more collaborative partnerships. So if you are an organization watching us today and interested in having a STEM related activity added on to your normal uh, offerings for the, um, your public and the residents of Long Beach, please consider us. Uh, we can adapt our lessons to almost any topic again because it's that uh, collaboration of stem not singled on any one specific area of science or technology right right and and also a good opportunity for organizations who may already have their own sites right that this could be a, a good way to partner together uh, and maybe they're not serving youth or children in the way that you are Maybe they're providing services to families, but bringing you on board as a partner could probably be a nice way to augment just that whole experience for everybody. So, so with that, can you share your contact information so those wishing to get a hold of you um, know how to reach you? Yeah, Laura, do you want to put that in the chat? So you can reach us on any social media platform, such as um, Instagram, Shared Science Fun, Facebook, Shared Science Fun. We're also on Twitter as Shared Science Fun. Okay. <laughs> um, and then our online website, sharedsciencefun.org. Um, you can check out our programs there and more about our missions and our statement, who we've impacted, how many students we've reached. Okay. And we're always looking um, to see how we can help our communities. Yeah, grow. new opportunities. We want more fun fun times, more cool <laughs> opportunities, awesome opportunities. Because shared with. science is cool. Let me tell you, you partner with them, you know, just way to magnify the cool factor. Yeah, we, I mean, we this week we've done a uh, strawberry DNA. We will do enzymatic uh, reactions tomorrow. We do robotics uh, coding. We have these cute little robots from iRobot called Roots. Uh, that we are testing out and um, we're, we're coding using an online tool called Replit for Python coding. So quite a range of stuff that we teach based on the expertise that we, uh, whoever's teaching, right? Yeah. The instructors that we have on hand. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Laura, Michelle, if there's an email, do you want to share an email where maybe if people just want to send you a quick email? Is there sure, one? I'll type it in. Um, and if you wouldn't mind uh, saying it out loud too, there we sure. go. It's info, info. at sharedsciencefund.org. Yes. Don't forget the fun. <laughs> I was just gonna say the operative word in all of this folks is fun. So for those of you not on Facebook Live and watching on another platform, uh, again, you wanna get a hold of Laura, Michelle, their colleagues, learn more, collaborate more. Um, it's info at sharedsciencefun, F-U-N, dot org. 
And with that, just want to share a big, 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 just say a big thank you to both you, Michelle and Laura. Thanks for taking the time to share with us a little bit more about, you know, how fun it is to be part of shared science and how amazing actually in, in all of your partnerships. I think we learned quite a bit about you today, how you work um, and what's, what's coming down the pike as well. So with that, thank you again, and we will see you all next time on all our right. stories. All right, thank you. Time.